somewhere else. Yep. This is I used this is the original place. No, no, the original place I was at was um your parents' house. My parents' house in Tacoma. Yeah, I've really gone a lot. You've seen me leave my parents, go to New York, go out on my own. And I was in the kitchen first, and then I got an Ethernet cable, but it broke, so now I'm back in the kitchen. Yeah, it looks nice there. You look like you have a nice place, actually. It's not. It's not. Oh, that really? Place, it's really depressing. I really think you should move to Astoria. I want you to move I'd love, to Astoria. I'd love to. Yeah. I, well, I told you, I tried to like, I tried to f- find a place, and I was like, they were like, great, just give us your uh, $200,000 a year income uh, tax return and uh, make sure you're not Jewish or black and your credit score has to be like 2000. It's just like they fucking are crazy now. It's insane how lucky I got. My landlord didn't ask. He's the best guy. Even with Steve and Caitlin, I got, they just, he didn't even ask a question. He was like, great. Cause you got a re- He got, they got a Rex. It's all about Rex. It's just like get, getting into a club. I need to get a wreck into like a building. No one trusts comedians anymore. Like you, you can't. are a wreck. I am a wreck. <laughs> if you say you're a, but my credit score is good now. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. Cause I have, I have like all these student loans and I just don't pay them. How does that work? I, I don't know how that shit works. I don't yeah, get, I, I'm so no grateful. I never person. went to school. They can't put you to jail, you know, not yet. So I just, uh, just don't pay them. And, that's just my life. But it doesn't apparently it doesn't affect your credit. Huh. Then why is everyone so upset about it? Well, I probably they've probably been now like a hundred thousand dollars worth of interest that I owe. <laughs> but huh. uh, you know, it's a terror I should have been paid. But yeah. That's for another show. Who gives all a right, shit? Right. This, this is, is a the movie IRS podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Action. <laughs> At cut. Uh, <laughs> I hate when you say cut. <laughs> doesn't make sense. You you saying I hate is now part of the uh, the catch part of it now. That's part of the whole theme. I you suppose so. We expressing hate at the end of it. We got a ton of responses here. This is insane. People really appreciate the show. Some of them are just like, "Would you rather suck a dick or eat a piece of shit or whatever?" We'll answer those too. We're going to answer all of them one by one. We can't answer all of these. There's way too many. I mean, I, suck I sh- a dick. Who, if you would eat a piece of shit? Over I, I made sucking, that up. I made that's that. That's the up. most homophobic thing you could ever do to choose feces over a dick. <laughs> um, that's a good anyway. point. No, a dick is nice. Yeah. I send like really nice dick pics. They're just beautiful. I don't know. Maybe it's my dick. You know what? what are you, I should stop saying the pics be beautiful. I have a nice dick. It's no yeah, secret, no, I, I, but I have a nice dick. I struggle to believe you, though. I feel like you're a guy whose dick would be really off, just no, off center, it's, off it, color. It's, no, it's straight. It's the right. It's olive skin. It, it reminds me of that Louis bit about like that dick and the olive oil. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> It's thick. And, you know, I was, I was sending it to this, you know, this girl earlier, you know, just a stranger. And uh, no, but uh, but I was looking, I was like, I, I'd suck that. Interesting. You know, it just it just looks dicks seem like you nice to suck, you know? Yeah, I feel the same way. It seems fun. And then you get a surprise. It shoots into the back of your throat. And you, cool, you feel like a win. How cool is that to suck something until like that's way better than a Tootsie Pop where you get to the end and the thing like you suck something to the point where it explodes in your mouth. I've said this for years. It seems delightful. I mean, I yeah. would do it if I was, uh, if I was, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> beep. Do you beep out gay people? <laughs> yeah. Um, should all we right. jump into yeah, this? Let's We've got a lot in. of questions. Let's jump I mean, in. Now, have you peeked at any of these? Or are these all going to come as a surprise? I, to you? I didn't peek. I was going to. Then I was like, you know what? Surprise me. All right. Well, well, we got a lot. I'm going to have to scan through. A better host would have scanned through these and written down the best ones. But I'm going to yeah, have whatever. to just fuck that. Is Nicolas Cage actually talented? Ooh, good question. Good question. Um, I think there might have been a community episode about this. Uh, he's here's my answer. He's a great comedic actor and a terrible dramatic actor. And and he, he won for leaving Las Vegas because even though it's I guess dramatic, it's still him being kind of crazy. He can do crazy. He's great at being crazy. But if he's not crazy, it's the worst acting ever. Yeah, I tend to think that these people that are successful in show business, I, I'm a little, I push back a little bit on these people that are like, show business is bullshit and they're idiots and they're fucking crazy and they're whatever. He's obviously talented. I mean, yeah. it, it takes talent to reach the the things he's reached. I guess there's some nepotism involved probably, but... I mean, Raising Arizona is amazing and he's great. I mean, obviously, and this will lead to another question that's in here about script and acting, which I thought was interesting that I should have written down. But it, I do think a great 
script and direction can make a, a an actor look great and sure and the reverse of that can happen but i don't know i think he's talented like i i hate face off i hate the action bullshit i actually hated that horror movie that everyone liked but i guess i was in the wrong on that one the wicker man recent. no the recent one is this a nicholas cage movie nicholas cage horror it's like a revenge rape chainsaw oh, thing I mean, it starts uh, with an s i think susperia maybe or something like that oh yeah he, I mean, he's made so much bad. He's completely devalued his whole. Well, here's the thing, too. Like with with actors, a big part of being a good actor is choosing the right roles. So like Sean Penn's not just a great actor because he's a great actor. He's a great actor because he also picks great movies. So you kind of know you're going to be getting a good movie. So Nicholas Page, when it comes to that, is not a good actor. Yeah, he's in like more terrible movies. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like for 10 years, he just did like 400 action movies was just a one word title it was just like next and run <laughs> and, 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 and jump it was just all awful so he's bad in that sense but he's good at being over the top he's a good over the top actor yeah over the top now that's a great movie with sylvester stallone you ever watch that I, one i've never seen that oh it's an arm wrestling he's a truck driver oh. in arm wrestling to get the, his son back I, I mean, I that's seen... like it's the most like Sylvester Stallone 80s. He drives a truck, loses his kid. And then there was like this big line where he'd say the world meets no one halfway. And it's one of those movies where there's the line that they say it like four times. And yeah. then like there's like a long enough period in between that when he says it, you're like, oh, there it is. <laughs> and he's got to be he's beating like people that clearly are way bigger and stronger than him. And he, he, you win a hood ornament, I think. Oh, ma what, how much masculinity like that has to be the most masculine movie. The idea of like. I got to arm wrestle <laughs> to get my kid back. <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, I wonder if it's aware of itself being called over the top. Like, is it trying to be funny? But well, what is what is the reference to over the top is like you, I guess, like scoop under and over the top. I mean, it's a reference to I mean, I don't know if there's a lot of irony with Stallone. <laughs> I don't know if no. there's a lot. It seems pretty, pretty sincere. <laughs> yeah. So but anyways, that was a movie I remember watching as a over kid. The that top. movie and like Next of Kin. There was a few like 80s movies that like my uncle had on VHS taped off of HBO and we would just watch them. Well, you know me. I, I've seen three 80s movies. I hit all of them. I got an argument in the cellar yesterday about how 80s movies fucking the comedies all suck. Meatballs, strive, sack, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I think we've talked about this a little bit yeah. before. Except the John Hughes ones are amazing. Ferris Bueller's on right now on IFC and I was watching it and I just cannot express how much joy it brings from the opening shot of it, the whole thing. It's just a masterpiece. Yeah, well, I feel none of that, but I... Um... <laughs> But that's what started this off. This is what started oh, the yeah, hatred which, of you. We which, should have saved that. We should have had these in reverse order. So we, you could have won some people over. I think opening with John Candy's a piece of shit and John Hughes <laughs> is like a right wing alt right Nazi. I think it's hard to win these people back. Yeah, well, I thought, you know, whatever. Fuck them. Um, I still stand by that. But uh, the Ferris Bueller one's insane. I mean, that is one of the great movies. There's some fun parts. I, you know, whatever. I can't even remember. But we fought. We fought on that. We used to. This used to be like WTF. This used to be like a tense program. Where yeah, like, but I think we started. You know, I started to feel bad. I'm a very empathetic person. And you're just a pathetic person. So I started <laughs> to come up with things that we would agree on. Hey, pathetic. That's funny. Pathetic scene. Empathetic. It's like it is right. I keep working on this, but nothing. I'm. I have feelings for your patheticness. I'm. I'm. M. Mm, you're pathetic. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we, we could call the show Pathetic and Empathetic. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Let's change the title. But you got to be pathetic. What, do you, what pathetic. do you think of this? Here's one. This is funny because we were talking about this last night at the cellar. This person says, how did you two lovebirds meet? And we just talked about this. Oh, we had a real gay uh, conversation right in front of people. Uh, <laughs> we, in front of black people, too, who were like <laughs> the most ball busty people. We just went, we don't care. Yeah, we were looking at some old emails of when uh, you, this was, I don't know, 22 years ago, uh, uh, Kissinger was in office and you emailed me saying, I'm looking to do comedy in uh, Louisville. Quite humbly, I might add. You were pretty humble because you, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're humble or just not as successful because you were like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, pretty successful. I, I said, I gave some credits. I said, I've been on Comedy Central and blah, blah, blah. But that's the I thing. I feel night. like you're doing so well now that you wouldn't have, you'd be like, hey, fucker, you know who I am. You know what I mean? Do I come off like that? Do you think I come off like that kind of guy? My success <laughs> and I just talk shitty to people? Have you ever seen me talk that way to anybody? <laughs> no, but I feel like the email would be kind of like, hey, it's Joe List. I'd love to do, you wouldn't say anything. You would just like assume. Because in this, you're like, 
I've been on this and this, you know, you're still showing your, you're doing what I, you know, I've been on this and this. You wouldn't have to do that now. And then you respond, sure, I'm a big fan of Normand. <laughs> <laughs> it actually uh, ruined the whole thing. We were emailing, yeah, and I was like, no, and I was like, I'm a big fan. I'd love you to come here. I'll set up a whole show. And then at the end, I'm just like, have you seen Norman? Tell yeah, Norman I say hi. <laughs> yeah, and I, I see now you're talking about how I would be now. I know you and your I would say to Norman, oh, Ronan Hirschberg says hi. And he'd be like, uh, Rana, 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 maybe. Yeah. Is he a stripper? I mean, and that would answer? happen today. You tell him. <laughs> um, uh, OK, hold on one second. I just I clicked away from it for a second. Bunch of other topics here. By the way, you had when you came down, you had that great bit about being in Ireland and watching the um, a woman get beat up. Oh, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> but then I my... saw you do it on your special. So I guess you, you took a while to record that bit. Yeah, well, Jesus. I mean, now you're making me feel. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You're like, yeah, you, you hold on to bits for years. I'm like, Jesus. Well, that was working. It was actually, it, it developed and grown. It was good. Well, it was fresh then because it had just happened. And then for a while, I stopped doing it and I had to bring it back. Can I be honest about something? And I really like, I'm going to oh, get in trouble. That's not about you. I get in trouble. I find it so, and it's because it's awful. I find the idea of a guy punching a woman just so hilarious, but only because it's awful. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> don't, don't fucking do the three. Do not wow. <laughs> throw me under the bus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, no, I mean, I did a bit about it. So of course, it's, I mean, I think there's something humorous about it. It's I just guess. like, it's, it's funny because it shouldn't happen. I'm laughing because I'm fucking sensitive to the thing. I'm laughing because it's awful. You know, I feel like you're just trying to win back the people you lost on the John Hughes <laughs> thing. You're like, I like punching women. Well, there's, <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> have you ever heard of this movie, Alpha Dog? Yeah, I think so. Well, I get just, called that all the time. Yeah, sure. It's this terrible movie uh, with, um, God, who is it? It's uh, Emil Hirsch. It's based on a true story where he, Emil Hirsch kidnaps his kid and the older brother has to get the kid back. And the older brother is, who's that over-the-top actor who's really good in some stuff? He's in a hell of a lot Ben Forster. Oh, my God. Ben Foster. He's amazing. Ben Foster. He's amazing. But in, in the beginning, What's he's he amazing now. In this. So okay. he's like this, he's this like meth head guy in this movie. And he goes to a party. It's like all these rich kids. And he's looking for the guy who kidnapped his brother. And one, one person at the party said, I don't know him. And he just pushes Ben Foster. And they never set up that Ben Foster knows karate. So it just comes out of, it's just like halfway through the movie, he just does a roundhouse kick. It just like starts, and then everyone at the party starts attacking him. He's just doing all this ninjutsu, which is so hilarious to watch because. <laughs> he, he just don't set it up, but then this Asian woman just comes running at him like ah, and he just punches her. In the face. Oh God, it's, it's fucking great. I feel, but you know what I'm saying? It's just no, like in so comedy shocking. scenes. Yeah, yeah no, there's a lot of comedy scenes. Like Army of Darkness has a bunch of moments like that. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's like South Park when like who is it? Bo Derek's in the panel and she says something, and one of the Canadian guys just slaps her in the face. Like it's just like. It's people forget that comedy. We laugh because it's wrong. Of people, course, na people yes. now are like, well, no, we should only laugh at political activism. <laughs> like, like, what are you laughing? <laughs> no, that's that. I just had this conversation on Mindful Metal Jacket with Ian Lara. where like, and it's it's a hard stance because I understand like people get mad. But like when Ari does this thing with death and people are like, well, there's no joke. Like someone dies and he's like, yeah, they deserve to die. And they're like, there's no joke. And I'm like, well, the joke is it's like he's saying the opposite of what you're supposed to say. That, yeah. is, that is the joke. Whether or not you think it's funny is that's whatever. That's subjective. But saying a thing that you're clearly not supposed to say is funny. I mean, hitting a woman is funny because you're not supposed to. Yes. And I actually think sometimes humor, what it does do, and this is why people hate it a lot. Humor reminds us of the indifference of the universe. It like shines a light on that. We all try to take everything seriously and like, you know, and oh, her light. And then the jokes kind of reveal the reality behind that, that nothing does matter, which is true. So jokes are kind of just as honest real, um, emphasis on that. And people get, they're not really getting mad at the person telling the joke. They're getting mad at reality and life for being indifferent. Right. Every time someone's offended, they're not offended at the comic, but just that God doesn't exist. But it's worth specifying there's situations where a man punching a woman is funny, like in a movie and, and like not just like yeah, not in real life. And a man yeah. walks up and punches. No, a woman in the face, you know, like, hilarious. That. 
you know, I mean, maybe if she was like a big fat woman or something, but uh, I'm kidding. I'm and then kidding. she steps back on a banana peel. And... <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. It's terrible, but I'm laughing because it's terrible. Right. I'm laughing because I'm a feminist. That makes if sense. I, if I supported, if I liked men beating up women, I wouldn't laugh at him. I'd be like, good. That's what I, that would be my reaction. I'd be like, good. That happened. I'm glad. Right. More of it. Right. <laughs> By the way, Ben Far Ben Foster, you got me saying the wrong name. Ben oh, Foster yeah. played a kid with Down syndrome on Freaks and Geeks. Remember he did. that? Yes, he was great. That was an early. That was like the first, maybe the he first was, episode, the second. Episode. Was, I just love that he was like a method actor at like twelve. He's like in that just totally Daniel Day Lewising it up as like a retarded kid. He's fantastic. Did you see that Without a Trace? That was the best movie of a couple of years ago. I Pearl hated it. it. I, I didn't hate it. it. I just thought it was a little too. It was a little too understated. I thought it was great, but I think we talked about this before. What right. do you think of stand-ups as movie stars like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Steve Martin, Martin Lawrence, and so forth? Um, so By the way, you left out Robin Williams, who's probably the best <laughs> of those. Yeah, I had a actor. theory for a while, but I guess it's probably not true. I had a theory that the best stand-ups don't make the best actors. Yeah, that's not crazy. I mean, like, Dave Chappelle's not fucking Lawrence of Olivier. Chappelle... Lawrence of Olivier? Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, Chappelle, Lawrence Rock. Olivier. Yeah, Chappelle, Rock, Woody Allen, uh, Louis. Woody's not a like great him. actor. Yeah, I, guess, I mean. He's great at what he does. He's, he's not great gonna, at what he does. Yeah. But Chris Rock is like one of the, probably the best comedian or one of the best top five comedians and truly one of the worst actors of all time. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable. I mean, we're going to see the guy. Like, he's at the <laughs> cellar every night. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, uh, all right, fine. I never, well, whatever. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. But like Robin Williams, I'm not crazy. As a I don't think he's a great. Robin Williams is an actor as a stand up. He's acting like a stand up. He's the greatest um, discrepancy between actor comedian. I think he's yeah. like a dog shit, horrible comedian and a great actor. Or a but very the, good actor. I think he's great, actually. I mean, like Mrs. Doubtfire, he's great. The scene at the, at the end where they're taking away his kids is like so touching. It's beautiful. But I think the reason he's I, I, in a way, I don't even think it's, I think the reason he's a bad comic and he's a great actor is because when he was a comic, he was just acting. He was a sponge. And in many ways, he was just acting other people's jokes like he was just. Yeah, he, he just took And that's why um, Madigan told me this once in a really uh, it stuck with me. She says you can't trust actors who are comics because they're just like sponges and they'll just take other people's lines because they have no control over it. They're not writers at heart. Robin Williams isn't a writer. A stand up is a writer at heart. He's not a writer at heart. He's an actor at heart. So he just like collects shit, you know, and it makes That's him a great actor. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, by the way, Eddie Murphy, who's on this list, Eddie Murphy, like we're talking about Nick Cage. Eddie Murphy might be like the most talented person of all time. I mean, like he's unbelievable. Yeah. A b amazing comedian. I was going to say brilliant, but I feel like people will push back on brilliant because he says bag 5,000 times. But an amazingly hilarious stand-up and just a straight movie star. You watch yeah. him on the back of the truck in Beverly Hills Cop, which is amazing. And he's just a star. I mean, he's like 18 years old. He, he steals every scene. He just shines. He's amazing. But you know what's interesting about him is that he seems like he like most comedians become actors eventually become kind of serious actors and you forget they're even comics and it really makes their career have a, like a lot of longevity. And he seems like he could have been that guy. He seems like he could have done amazing, serious work, but he kind of chose not to really make that transition. But he did some, didn't he get he an did a little for like dream girls? But that was even that was late. That was after he like stopped acting for a while. You know what I mean? Even that was late. Like he could have done that in his prime. Like Jamie Foxx did, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think he tried to do some though, maybe, but I don't know. I bet I, I was at an age when he went serious, I tuned out. I was like, ah, I'm good. I don't, I like the comedy. But like 48 hours, I mean, like he invented the fucking buddy cop or whoever wrote it, I guess. Yeah, and like he Beverly Hills, screenwriter some credit. Yeah, Beverly Hills, all, all that stuff. I mean, he's a he's a fucking star. He's the He's a movie star. He's a comedian. He's just uh, unbelievable. Is the joke of Beverly Hills Cop that it's a black guy in Beverly Hills? I think that's part of it. I mean, it's a Detroit guy, but yeah, it Detroit adds to it that guy. it's black. It's certainly. I've never seen the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You got to watch it. We should do Martin Brest. He did, uh, we could do uh, Midnight Run. You saw Midnight Run. I saw Midnight Run. Yeah. We'll, we could we, do we, Midnight we, Run and Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop is fantastic. I got, I got to see Beverly. Yeah, I got to see but it. But it's weird because you're going to watch it now. It's 2021. You're a cunt. I mean, it's going to be a whole <laughs> thing. But like in 1984, 
or whatever it was, 87. I think, I think it was 84, 85, 83, maybe whatever it was. It's like unbelievable. It's my favorite of all. I like it better than coming to America and the other shit. It's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's fun. I, you know, I said this the other day at the, the table and some people were agreeing with me. The thing about 80s comedies is that they're kind of, and it's, I like jokes. So the 80s comedies I love are like Airplane, Naked Gun. They got jokes, jokes, jokes. Or Albert Brooks, jokes, jokes, jokes. So many of the 80s wow, okay. comedies are like, they're like action adventure comedies. So it's like, they're neither action nor comedy. They're kind of some weird middle ground. It's hard for, and people are like, Ghost, like even last night, I was like, Ghostbusters is the greatest comedy. I'm like, there's like two funny scenes in Ghostbusters. It's a good movie, but like, I have trouble wrapping my head around that. Yes, I agree with that. But yeah, this is a different. There's different kinds of comedy. Like people yeah. ask me my favorite comedies. I mentioned Vacation, Christmas Vacation, Naked Gun. This is Spinal Tap. Uh, maybe Borat. I mentioned Dumb and Dumber. But I don't mention Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is I like more than all those movies. But it's different than a comedy. It's not a million jokes. Right. It's, it's like a it's a dramedy kind of thing. There's some drama, but it is straight comedy. But it's not as joke heavy. Beverly Hills Cop is comedy. But it's action. But it's not fucking Naked Gun. Right. It's not. It's not fucking Best in Show. It's not even but, close. But to me, that's what a, the best comedies are, aren't they? Just the thing that makes you laugh the most. But I'm not saying. But I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Is Beverly yeah, yeah. Hills Cop is not a comedy. It's, it's a like comedy a, action. I guess. Well, you know what it is. You know what the thing I have trouble. I think where where, where people like that I don't movies that are fun. <laughs> I feel like maybe I don't. I don't always appreciate movies that are fun if they're not. Caddyshack. Like really you like funny. Caddyshack? I have only seen the first uh, 10, 20 minutes. That's insane. I mean, like Caddyshack's <laughs> like unbelievable. You like jokes. It's like every single no, I, I scene watch. is a joke. I, mean, I love Back to School, so I, I should watch Caddyshack. Yeah. I mean, if you're a comedian who's obsessed with movies and you like jokes and yada, yada, and you're going to be claiming that 80s comedies suck. I should and watch then you just haven't seen Caddyshack. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I mean, Caddyshack is without question the number one 80s comedy and one of the great comedies of all time, maybe number one. Yeah, but then I try to watch the I try to watch Animal House and there's just like a rape and a joke 40 minutes in. And I'm like, I what? And everyone's like, it's the greatest movie ever. It's like, no. I don't. I Animal House like is they're 70s. So over, yeah. They're so overrated, a lot of them. Animal House is, Animal House is the 70s and it sucks. Animal House yeah, stinks. It sucks. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I agree. I, the, the, <laughs> right. I'm a zit. I'm like, who cares? No, you're not. Ugh. But uh, all right, I'll give it you a second chance. Anyway, let's. Uh, well, so what are you, are you answering these questions too? I feel like we're doing it like a. Uh, what are you talking about? I just I talked about Eddie Murphy. Oh, right, I talked right, about right. yeah. That's we right, talked right, about. Right. I didn't talk about Chris Rock because I fucking see him every <laughs> night. You psycho. <laughs> this one's not a question, but this says um, Joe and Ron on reviewing a car. Joe, this Ferrari is amazing. Ron on. I wish it had back seats. Joe, it's a sports car. It's designed to run on cuts him off. Would be better if it had back seats and it should put all pull a trailer. I like it, but it's missing back seats. Joe, okay. <laughs> that one's fun. I like well, he like burned us with a metaphor, or he burned me with a metaphor. I like that. It's like a uh, uh, he burned me with an allegory. Very well done. Yeah, you love allegories. All right, this guy allegories. writes: As Hollywood has been trending towards big production superhero movies and remakes slash sequels, do you see any hope for future box office number ones? I don't. Wait, hope for box office number ones that aren't those? Or yeah. you mean we have hope the, for them? Like, is there any hope for them being good movies? I assume is what he's. Oh, uh, like how back in the day, a good movie could be like number one. Yeah, like we talk about Godfather was the top grossing movie in 1972. Yeah. I don't see an art house movie being number one. No, I think I really think, especially now that like movies are going to streaming, I really think movies like you see in theaters now are pretty much all just like amusement park rides for the most part. Like they're not every movie. Like I see pre. Like I I went to see a movie yesterday and I saw the previews. And it's just all fucking reboot, remake, prequel. We get to find out the origins of a, a G.I. Joe action figure, which is like, it's not even like real. It's just like a toy figurine. And we get to find out how his father like told him he sucked or like whatever. It's just like insane. And, and I'm watching them all. And I'm like, this movie, movies in theaters now are just literally, you know, the movie. I think I said this, but. You know, when you go to an amusement park ride and they have that like silly movie to get you into the narrative and it'll, sometimes it'll have yeah. the actors, like it'll have Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox in a little scene before you go on the Back to the Future ride. All movies now in theaters have become that. They're just the ride before, there's just a, a glorified version of that movie you watch before you go on a ride. It has no soul whatsoever. 
Yeah, even I, I went to the movies and I there's a trailer that Steven Spielberg remade West Side Story where I'm like, he what did, are you yeah, doing? I, I guess know. he's having fun. I have to be like, all right, he's 79 years old or whatever, and he wants to have some fun. Every great director has to make a musical at some point. They've all done it. I mean, most of them, like Scorsese, Coppola, um, Woody Allen. I feel like, you know, Spielberg never did. Coen Brothers have a little bit in Hail Caesar. Yeah, and well, also Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Oh, right. Um, this so, yeah, of, no, I have no hope, but, no, but I have movie no hope streaming, either. movie streaming, you know, that's what the good show will be. Well, I have hope for movies because there's going to be independent. It's easier yeah. to make a movie in a lot of ways. But um, and, and I think I do still think we're in New York. So we have Angelica Theater, IFC Theater. There's tons of posters and movies still being made that are good. You just got to look for them. It's the same with rock and roll. People like rock is dead or whatever. You just got to look for it. There's still great rock bands. happening. But it does seem like we are done with like my friend brought this up. You know, like the movies in the 90s that they put a lot of money into, but they were like adult movies like American Beauty and shit like that. These are like adult movies they put a lot of money into. Like, not hundred of millions, but maybe 50 million. Are we doing that anymore? It seems I like it's either independent film or or Avengers 12, suck my dick, you know, whatever. A few are. I mean, the Coens still are around. P.T. Yeah. Anderson's still around. Tarantino's still around. So there are still a few people doing it, but certainly yeah. less. I like what the Duplass brothers do. They do low independent things that are pretty good. Right, right. But yeah. um, this is a good segue. This guy writes bad movies from good slash great directors. Um, I think everything Francis Ford Coppola has made after Apocalypse Now, basically. Well, with Coppola, it's not even it's not even that they're awful. It's just that they're like mediocre, which is even worse. It's like he, it's, right. it's like the opposite of a masterpiece is almost in a way just like a forgettable, OK movie, not even a terrible movie, you know? And yeah. that's what he kind of did, like the Rainmaker. And I'm like, the Rainmaker's pretty good, but like anyone could have made it. Yeah, it's really disappointing because, like, I think we talked about this a little bit before, so I don't want to dwell on it, but it's like the two Godfather, the first two Godfathers, and then the conversation is also great, but Ap and Apocalypse Now are just like unbelievable. And even if I know you don't like, love apocalypse now but like oh, what yeah, he yeah. did the way he did it is like pretty i recognize amazing. that it's better than jack i recognize uh, that it's even a better vision than the guy who made jack <laughs> yeah so it, it's 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 disappointing but well, uh, it's scary so what if what if it, it, it's like what if you just one day wake up and you're not funny that's what i feel like it's like yeah but i think there's there's factors. I mean, I, I feel like we might have touched this ground before, so I don't want to linger too long here. I mean, if we don't remember, I'm sure they won't. But yeah, OK. Uh, all right. This one asks. Well, no, hold I on. I, I feel like there's a couple other ones to bring up for that. Oh, OK. Directors with bad movies, right? Yeah. The Coen Brothers, I think I, I get shit for this, but I think Hudsucker Proxy is like a piece of shit. It is bad. I mean, like, I don't think they can make like every movie they make is kind of interesting and yeah, they're this all is fun. They're all noble failures if they're not great. You know, that's the thing about them. It's either a noble failure or a great movie, but it's not like it's not. You know, I never watch it like, oh, my God, this is complete dog shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is interesting. And at least this, and this is the thing I always talk about. I like a filmmaker that at least I know they're putting thoughts into things. There's symbolism, there's allegories, right. there's yes. thoughtful shots. Like, okay, why did they come up with this shot? Where a lot of these movies we're talking about, it's just like throw the camera on the explosion, get a truck. This truck looks cool. Have it swing off a mountain and get picked up by a helicopter. Right. right. I like at least things that are like, we're going to shoot this on such and such lens because it's representing Some his intention. Asshole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I mean, you'll probably disagree violently, but I will say the last 15 movies Woody Allen has made, like, I think him fucking his kid is like not even, it's not the top reason he should stop making movies. So like, I really think like the movies themselves have become so bad. Like you haven't seen a rational man. I haven't seen that, good. but I just hate what he's, I just hate. There's just something he's just, you could just, every time you watch a movie, it's just like, it's just an old, it's like watching an old comedian who's just lost it. You know what I mean? It's like watching Bob Dylan now. It's like a novelty act. Yeah. He has a lot of mediocre movies. Does Scorsese I mean, have a horrible movie. No, it's tough. Somebody asked me recently. Oh, maybe it was Ro It was on Rogan. Uh, he was like, yeah. what's the least best Scorsese movie? And I'm like, I guess New York, New York. Um, yeah, I haven't seen New York, New York. They're his musical. Yeah, I had a hard time getting into Silence. But I like Silence. People it's say it's great. I mean, like, I, I, I watched it and uh, it was cool. I just was like, maybe it was mood or timing or whatever or, or a content. I'm not that into it, so I should give it another try, but 
it's definitely silence is definitely him making the movie he wanted to make and he didn't care if other people liked it you know yeah and I, it's not great it's like super long and weird but i i still think that is not awful i mean uh shutter island is actually legitimately great and underrated like that's a movie people kind of thought was shit by him and it wasn't i don't know if yeah seen that, but that's like a very good movie yeah, I like Shutter Island. The one complaint I had about it is like there felt like there was moments where it was just like fucking with us with all the plots. Yeah. It was like, just yeah. kidding. Just kidding again. <laughs> and yes. you're like, all right, all right. Come but on. But it's a good twist at the end. It like, is. Pretty iconic. Um, but I think people didn't expect him to make like a new, uh, I don't know what the style, the style is so old school and the way it's filmed. And they, I don't think people were used to that with him, you know. Yeah, but it's fun. I it do like fun, that yeah. movie. Um, yeah, I think most. Yeah, he's yeah he's not a guy who can like really. I think he puts so much intention in everything. He's not going to make complete dog shit. Color of Money is not a great movie. It's a fun no. movie. It falls into the Tom Cruise algorithm or whatever it's called. Uh, whatever. What's that word? Uh, Al- uh, formula. Algorithm. Formula well, algorithm works. Algorithm works too. I love the right. word algorithm. Um, but yeah, it falls in there. It's not a great script. It's very predictable. It's very like, yeah, there's nothing amazing, but it's fun. I mean, I like it. It's Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. I mean, you fuck it. It's hard to. And then that yeah. chick that's sexy Italian broad. I feel like Spielberg out of all of them is the one most capable of making the worst movies. Like, yeah, he's got some straight up garbage. Like, I think Ready Player One is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. I, I never saw that. I don't think there's like one frame that I enjoy. <laughs> Um, it's interesting because silence, like what you said about silence is like this podcast for me. It's like, it's the podcast I want to make, but nobody yeah. likes it. Oh boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, what's That's your, what you fav- wish I did. Um, what's your favorite year parentheses or decade of movies? And this is interesting. My friend Derek asked me recently, you can only watch movies from one decade the rest of your life. What decade are you choosing? That's a better version of this question. My instinct is always to say the 90s, but that's kind of like what we grew up on. You know, It has to be 70s or 90s. And ultimately, I'm going to go 70s. 90s because Goodfellas. And then there's a lot of like, I grew up in the 90s, obviously. So like, there's just more in the 90s that are fun. But the 70s, it would be hard to part ways with both Godfathers, Cuckoo's Nest, Jaws, and the, Sting, the French Connection, Nashville, sure. <laughs> um, Apocalypse Now, Rocky, Taxi Driver. So what is 90s? We got like Schindler's List and I mean, Tom there's Tarantino, Hanks, Pulp Tarantino. Fiction. Yeah, Pulp Fiction. Um, the Fugitive, Silence of the Lambs, uh, yeah. Goodfellas, Casino. I don't know, but 2000s is also really, is it 2000s? I feel like all some of my favorite movies oh, are 2000s. I'm What's meeting you, over here. Really? What's no Zodiac? Country. Zodiac, No Country. There Will Be Blood. There Will Be Blood. Um, fucking uh, Roma. Was that 2000? No, that was probably. No, that was Roma fucking was six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, then you have Big, Lebows- Big Lebowski's 90s. Sorry. Fargo 90s. Oh, far- oh that's right. Wait, no, definitely I mean, not. 100% 90s. Yes. What, is Sideways 90s? No, that's 2003. Uh, it's 2006, I think. But Fargo and Big Lebowski and Gosford Park. 2000s, I also got Lost in Translation. I got Brokeback Mountain, Sideways, Election. Or it's Election 90s. Election's 90s, 100% 90s. That's like 99, I think. So that's yeah. another one for the 90s. And Mystic River, I think. Is, no, no, oh. Mystic River. <laughs> oh. You know I like that movie. Oh. But that's 2000. Yeah. That's 2000. But 90s, I'm all, I, like, I also love Braveheart. Obviously, I'm, I, I love Apollo 13, personally. Um, yeah, Braveheart is just a piece of shit, but uh, but they're fun, it's fun. Yeah. A few I love Gladiator, is Gladiator is like the much better version, it's like an amazing movie. I think Braveheart better than Gladiator. We should do a you know, what we should do, we should do a Braveheart Gladiator one where we kind of fight it out because I love Gladiator and I think Braveheart and sucks. I love Braveheart and I yeah. think Gladiator sucks. And I'm insulted, you're like support an anti Semite, honestly. But I don't, I don't <laughs> care about that, he's great. I mean, what the fuck you want from me? <laughs> Mel Gibson's terrific. <laughs> you know my stance on the Jew. I'm I'm more of a Jew than you are, for God's sake. Yeah, you're very pro uh, pro Israel. We talk. Um, yeah, we talk uh, <laughs> current events, and uh, I make you look like fucking Goebbels. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Actually, the Nazis supported Israel, which is interesting. They wanted yeah. all the Jews to go there, just get away. But then the Jews were like, yeah, it's too hard to figure it out. And not just like, all right, we'll kill you then. We gave you a shot. <laughs> no kidding. I guess I don't know my history, so I'll, I'll, I'll concede to you. But 
Movies that are regarded as bad that you like and or think are underappreciated and misunderstood. Okay, so I used to be a cunt till like a week ago, right? And I used to always say, fuck that. I have no guilty pleasures. If I like a movie, it is good. You know how some people, I know this is maybe not the question a little, but like, you know how some people are like, it's my guilty pleasure. I'm like, no, no, no. If I like a movie, it's good. But I've, I've decided that some of the Fast and Furious movies are truly my guilty pleasure. Yeah, I couldn't believe that you went and saw it and then you asked me if I'd seen it. I'm like, I'm insulted that you've asked me. I haven't seen one frame of one of these fucking dumb movies and I'm embarrassed by it. I you. watch those. I watch number seven, which is the only one I've seen. And then I watch nine and they are so excessive and so insane that I'm laughing the whole time. Like it's a comedy. It's like, it's like, it's because it's literally people trying to essentially just killing themselves and getting out of it over and over again. And it's just so, I don't know. I love it. Those are my guilty pleasures. See, I'm jealous of people like you. I try to do a bit about this, about Steve Rogers. He just laughs at everything. Like he's yeah. watching cat videos, like crying, laughing. I'm like, what are you watching? He's like watching cats slip on banana peels. And yeah. I'm like, you laugh. I watch a movie like that. I'm like, I fucking hate that. I wish I was laughing. I remember talking to this comic, Kevin Knox, and he went and saw Godzilla. And he's like, I loved it. He's like, I couldn't stop laughing. It was amazing. His dinosaurs eating the di I'm watching it going, what is this? Is dinosaurs? <laughs> Why are there dinosaurs? I fucking hate this movie. Yeah, I guess you don't have. That's true. Because even I, who is like more of a cunt in this podcast than you, I'd say, even I am like, I fucking love dinosaurs or I love sharks. Even I like uh, you kind of always needed to be the human drama. Yeah, I, I just I can't even like you have no guilty pleasures. Well, I do, but they're things I grew up on. Like I just talked about, like nostalgia. I love is your guilty pleasure. A few good men, cocked Top yeah. Gun. I, I'll watch Top. I've seen Cop Top Gun a hundred times. Yeah, so nostalgia is your kind of yeah. Yeah, those kinds of things. Uh, Braveheart, I love. I mean, it's a it's cheesy, it's inaccurate, and it's a little silly, but it's fun. I love it. But what's the question? The question is misunderstood, right? Sorry, movies that are regarded as bad that you like or think are underappreciated, misunderstood. I mean. I mean, cable I think, guy, I think, is like a masterpiece. Yeah. Minus the last 20 minutes that I think suck. Um, I, th I mean, I think it's so. I mean, in terms of comedies, I, I mean, I think I as much as people love Dumb and Dumber, I think from a critical standpoint, it's completely misunderstood and should be considered like a masterpiece, you know. Um, but I mean, obviously, people love that movie. Observe and Report, I thought was a movie that was great that kind of flopped. I don't know that movie. With Seth Rogen. I don't know that. I like the rom com he made like a couple last year, two years ago with Charlize Theron. I never saw that. Was it good? It's pretty fun. Yeah, I thought it was good. I liked it. But a lot of times, by the way, movies I see in the theaters, I'm yeah, having fun. I'm so happy. I like I remember the movie um, Begin Again with uh, yeah that actor. What's his name? Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. I saw it in the theater after a Sunday show, a 7 p.m. show. And it was the end of the weekend at the Omaha Funny Bone, and me and John again and the MC went and watched it because it was the only thing playing, and we were the only three in the theater, and I was like, this movie's great. This well, is a great the, movie. Here's the thing. We, like, criticize movies and we analyze movies, but so much of our liking a movie is, like, it's, like, 50% coming in without any expectations. That, like, defines every movie. You know what I mean? Just not having expectations. If you don't have expectations and it's not terrible you will think it's like five times better than it really is. Right. And then the other thing is just the mood you're in when you're watching it. Those right. two factors play more than your actual intellectual bullshit analysis shit. Those if two you've factors, seen it once. If you've seen it once and later on, whatever. But like, not like, you know, Citizen Ruth, which I love. I saw that not ex knowing anything about it. And I was so surprised. And then I tell you it's a masterpiece and you watch it. And you're like, eh. Like, it's like we... You know, and then you might might have told someone else, Begin Again is amazing. Oh, fuck. You know what movie I love that everyone hated? Hmm. Uh, fucking, um, God, Yesterday. Oh, I didn't see that. I fucking love that. I think that movie was very misunderstood. That's the one where all the Beatles never existed? Yeah. I Now, maybe I was just in a place in my life, but, like, watching that, like, I thought that was incredible. Because they do it in a way that's, like, what you wouldn't think like he start, you know, like he, it's as if the Beatles never happened. Right. Mm -hmm. But then he starts playing Beatles songs as if their own. And at first no one gives a shit. Like you'd think they just listen to be like, this is amazing. But like, they don't, no one gives a shit. Cause no one's looking to think some, someone's going to play great music. Right. So he's playing classics over people. Not li he literally plays 
let it be to his parents and they just keep on talking over it. It's like hilarious. It's like, <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I loved it. Yeah. Interesting. I remember watching an interview with um, Led Zeppelin where they were asking like, what was it like the first time you played stairway to heaven? Was it mystical with people in trance? And they were like, no, they were bored. They were going to piss. <laughs> they were like, we want to hear fucking, uh, you know, dazed and confused. They were like, this sucks. Yeah, they're like, what the, yeah, so much art is like, everyone's just like, what the fuck is this? A lot of times the artist is ahead of the audience, and they're like, this is great, you just don't realize it yet. Um, a movie that was critically acclaimed, but like everyone I know was like, what? I, I didn't like that movie, I don't remember that movie. Francis Ha is like uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in my top 20. Well, I actually have a friend in it. Which one? I'm friends with Michael Zegan. He's the, um, the roommate. The kid, the guy, the guy who's working That's on Adam Driver. Yeah, the guy who's working on Gremlins three. And he keeps saying undateable. Yeah, I'm friends with that guy. Oh, really? He's like one of the main guys in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I've never seen that show, but Francis Ha, I think, is like the greatest depiction of a friendship ending. And it's like beautifully shot. And Noah Baumbach is very good. But a lot of times this movie, he, his jokes, it gets too jokey and almost like sketchy. Yeah. And it loses me. That one, the humor is just like believable and subtle and i think greta gerg is like amazing and it's like so sad and beautifully shot i think it's like unbelievable i think it's one of the, my the best movies ever made well i'm friends with the guy so uh, i also enjoyed it and definitely did not turn it off halfway through anyway <laughs> um wow it's so interesting that because i feel like we agree on a lot of things and then there's movies that you're like i couldn't get through that and i'm like what I felt like that movie was a little like Girls, where I felt like it was an accurate depiction of people I found annoying. But I do love some of Noah Baumbach's movies. Like, I love Greenberg. What was the other um, one like this that you said you turned up? Was it Lost in Translation? I didn't know. I saw it in theater. I just wasn't crazy about it. Yeah, there was something else, though. You were like, I got halfway through, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was probably like the greatest movie ever. It's probably like Casablanca or something. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a strange duck. All right, let me see what else we <laughs> yeah, got. Yeah, yeah. This person says door knobs versus door handles. Handles are way better. Doorknob for door handles? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. This person, I mean, just, <laughs> this, this person just writes, Boondock Saints is overrated. Did you ever see Boondock Saints? <laughs> I've never seen it, actually. No, because you're not from Boston. In Boston, that movie's like considered fucking uh, Seven Samurai. It's like people talk about it like it's amazing. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's goofy. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. It's, this is the one with Willem Dafoe. Yeah. And, and, like, there was able... a firefight. This is like an Abel Ferrara movie, right? Maybe. I don't even know who that is. Oh, no, maybe that's someone else. Yeah, I mean, the, every, the way everyone talks about it, it seems like it's a very bad movie that means a lot to people, but it's not a good movie. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not good. Movies you never finish because you got lucky during them. I mean, I don't know. This person's from, like, the 70s. Got lucky. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. One time I'm watching... Uh, you'll love this. I was watching... Uh, well, maybe you won't love it. I hate when people tell a story and go, you love, you'll love this. Puts a lot of pressure on the other person, you know? Yeah, maybe I'll I love it, though. I, I think you'll like it, but uh, I was watching Sideways in theaters with this girl, and she started making out with me in the middle, and I'm like, we're watching the movie. And then she goes, you've already seen it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but second time. <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, that's really funny. That's like a curb <laughs> That's yeah. fucking really funny. Did it work out between you? Yeah, we're married and we have three kids. <laughs> and their names are uh, Thomas Hayden and uh, Giamatti. She was so hot. God damn it. Um, this one's hilarious. This person just wrote, take the week off. <laughs> uh, Wait, is there anyone you got lucky? At? I mean, no, I don't know. I'm never like, I'm, first of all, yeah, I, I was not. No, I never started watching a movie and made a move. I just, I was not that guy that was ever like sitting there watching a movie with, I, I did my, I fucked when I was like in a blackout at a bar. Every once in a while, a woman would be like, oh, I'll fuck you for fucking Christ's sakes. <laughs> I'm romantic. like, all right. <laughs> I, uh, well, no, I'm trying to think, you know, that movie Unbreakable with Angelina Jolie, she directed about the yeah. guy or unbroken <laughs> no unbroken about the guy the pow it's like a true story she made a movie oh yeah yeah i brought a girl we me and a girl went to see that it was so boring I, we just started making out it was kind of like if you take a girl a movie you want to take them to like a it's really good if it's a boring movie because then you kind of like we should just make out to pass the time maybe but then sometimes they get bummed and everyone's just bummed you're in a bad yeah. mood a thriller a scary movie is where you want to do 
Oh, because then they'll like hold you and get yeah. scared and touch your dick or whatever. Yeah, um, a good movie. Then you're talking, and then there's like, let's go somewhere to talk about it. A yeah. bad movie at the end, they're like, let's go home. I, I'm sorry. It was really awkward after because it was like a first date, and then she like was driving home and got in like a serious car accident. Now we're talking. I was, I was already home, <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, I got a serious car accident." I'm like, do you, "I was like, do I have to come over? Like, it's just a first date. I'm not like, we're not in the point of the relationship where I have to like help her with the accident, right?" No. But it felt awkward because I was like, all right, well, good luck with that. <laughs> was there a second date? No. Wow. Was she all like mutilated and fucked up and shit? No, no. But it was like a car accident. Her car wouldn't start and she was stuck there. And there was like uh, she had to wait for like triple A. And I was like classic. I was like, just like sci-fi. I was like, good luck with that. <laughs> One time I drove soda to the airport JFK, which is far. And my, I blew out a tire. My tire just exploded like on the highway. Luckily, I didn't. Or maybe I, my car broke down. I can't remember. Somehow, for some reason, the car became like broke down. And I'm in now I'm in a thing where I'm like, I'm fucked. I, I'm, I'm stuck out here. I don't have any money. I just when I was completely broke. And then but Soder still has to get to the airport. So we're both like individually in huge problems that the other one doesn't give a shit. About. <laughs> like he's like, I got to figure out how to get out of here. I'm like, what are you crazy? My car is broken down. I'm, never, I'm stuck on the highway. And he's like, I know, but I have a flight. So and this was before like, Uber, right? Way before. This is like 12 years ago. Before probably. taxis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think he had to like try to call a taxi company, but I didn't give a shit. I was like, yeah, you do whatever you got to do. I got to try to figure out how to change a tire and like Jesus. To, uh. whatever. What? But uh, we're not should never drive people. friends to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. All right. Here's one that says all time favorite performance, most underrated performance, best performance by a comedian in any genre. So it's three, three topics there. Uh, what's the first one? All time favorite performance. For me, it's uh, mine's like hack or whatever. Cliche, I get, but not cliche, but like obvious, like De Niro in Raging Bull and Daniel Day Lewis and There Will Be Blood. Those are two of my. Yeah, favorite. I mean, like those two stand out to me as like the great performances. Yeah, those are amazing. I mean, like, fuck. I mean, I yeah, this is a very old answer, but I still think Brando and Streetcar is just like incredible. Um, I'll give you Brando and On the Waterfront. Streetcar <laughs> stinks. It's like so unpleasant to watch. It stinks. My favorite play. Um, yeah, it may be a great play. I'm sure it is. It's a shit movie, though. I'm trying to think of other like what are the other great fuck? What are the other what are like? Give, give me the option. I'm trying to think. Like, fuck. Honestly, Daniel Day Lewis and Gangs of New York. Yeah, that one's fun. That's great. Um, underrated performances. I'll tell you what's underrated. I mean, obviously, people think it's great, but she should have won the Oscar as Reese Witherspoon in an election. It's underrated in the sense that it should have been more respected than it was. Yeah, there's a lot of those like that. I mean, um, Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. There's a lot of amazing. He was nominated com- though. Oh, he actually was nominated. Yeah. Yes, which, uh, for blackface, which I think now they just wouldn't allow that. Yeah, they would allow you to. They would cancel you for suggesting the idea. And only five years ago, you were getting an Oscar nod. <laughs> right. I mean, like we just talked about. I mean, some of these movies are fresh. Like Giamatti in Sideways ah, is Gima, like yeah. as good as any performance ever. Yeah, Jesus, Giamatti in Sideways. I mean, God, I'm trying to like. I mean, yeah, there's just so many. I, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what's the best because like. All my favorite performances are like just like the perfect casting, but there's so many of them that are just great. Bill Murray lost in translation. I wish he had won. He lost to Roberto Benigni, who like did backflips on the table and (laughs) shit, which was like annoying. Um, Wait, I'm trying to get him. Oh, uh, Ray Fiennes of Schindler's List. Oh, why is the top down? I'm fucking freezing. (laughs) Yeah, no, he's amazing in that movie. I mean, he got nominated. I think Ben Kingsley's amazing in that movie. Everyone's amazing in that movie. I mean, Javier Bardem in No Country has got to be. For some reason, I'm only thinking of villains right now, but Javier Bardem in No Country is one of. But, but that's what these are like. All are, of, everyone you've named was nominated for the Academy Award. Like, well, I'm on the first question, them. the best performance. We're to, oh, we're looking at oh, underrated. Okay, underrated best. Yeah, what, and best, some... best performance by a comedian in any genre. Best that's performance tricky. by a comedian in any genre. I mean, Robin like Williams is stand-up comic. I guess. I mean, a comedian. Well, I mean. Um, I mean, fucking Adam Sandler in uh oh in, god, and what's it called? It's pretty up there. I thought what? Uh, what's it called? Uh, oh. You didn't like that movie? What? I don't even know what movie you're talking about. <laughs> but if it's Sandler's in it, then no. 
Oh, the the last one he did, where he's the Jew who's like the, with the jewels. The, oh, the that movie. That movie was okay. <laughs> that was tough. That was that was like all right. That movie. He's pretty uh, great at it. I mean, Jackie Gleason in The Hustler is one of the great perf- comedic. I mean, a com- comedian turned. What? I don't know. You're just pulling out. Like, I can't do old movies. I get you like W.C. <laughs> Buddy Fields Hackett. Was in, uh, yeah. I'm like, all right. When, when Buddy Hackett played a drug in uh, the silent film. From <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to. Think. Oh, well. Um, this uh, is tough. Uh, we should have thought about this before because it's like dead air. I feel bad. You know, <laughs> Going back to the first question, I don't think Joe Pesci gets enough love for Casino. I think he gets all the love for Goodfellas, and I think he's better in Casino. Yeah, we've had this stuff, but we're getting a lot of repeat topics here. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have had this conversation. I, I, I yeah, you have, best you have, comedian. We, right, we've both made all those points. I mean, look, talk about Casino. There's a ton of great comedians in Casino. I mean, there's, there's a lot of Jews. Rickles is great. Kevin Pollock is great. Rickman. Alan King is in there. Um. Yeah, but what is the best comedian? That's a great point. What is the best comedian? Ter- is comedian performance? It's a serious role they're saying, right? I mean, it doesn't. It just says performance by a comedian in any genre. I mean, Mark Maron in Almost Famous, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lock the Gates. Uh, uh, fuck me. This is this is dead air. We stink. Uh, well, I'm just trying. Like, uh, let's get, is it a Robin Williams movie? Oh, this reminds me. Somebody asked us to talk about John Cazale, and he's amazing. Him in, in Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, my favorite performance. There you go. Now I'm into something. All my right. favorite performance <laughs> is Pacino in Dog Day Afternoon. He yeah, is pretty... incredible in that. That's, that's Those are my three crown jewels, De Niro and um, Raging Bull, and then There Will Be Blood, and then Pacino in Dog Day Afternoon, and Cazale is fucking amazing in that. He's just amazing in everything. Yeah, Cazale's incredible. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to think of the best comedian performance. I mean, I uh, I do stand by Reese Witherspoon being underrated in like a lot of stuff, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think like best comedian. Fucking, what are the comedians? Just name them. I don't even can't even think of a comedian right now. Also, uh, everything okay. fucking Philip Seymour Hoffman is done, which we, again we've, we've yeah. discussed a bit. Philip Seymour. Here's my most underrated performance: Philip Seymour Hoffman in Almost Famous, not nominated, should have been nominated, should have won. He's fucking pitch perfect, incredible, He's amazing in that movie. Yeah. Um, He's such a good, honestly, his performance in the Masters is so fucking good. Um, comedian, I mean, Eddie Murphy, um, Jim Carrey is a comedian. Um, yeah, but who's given the best? Like, I mean, I guess it's probably fucking, it's probably a bad comic or something. Cause I feel like, you know, someone who gave a, you know, it's probably like Jamie Foxx or some shit. Yeah, I guess it's tough to think of. Well, we should have thought of these before. I guess maybe we'll think and do another episode that doesn't. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I can't. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm just thinking of Robin Williams and Hook, and I'm like, that's stupid. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm going with you know what? Fuck it. No, I'm going with Adam Sandler and uh, I'm going with Adam Sandler in uh, the Jew, the Jew movie, the Jew betting. Oof. Um, favorite fictional bands in a movie. I mean, Spinal Tap has to be number one. It's like, yeah, Spinal Tap. I mean, you got the band from Almost Famous. That's pretty great. Oh yeah, Fever Dog. I mean, no, um, Stillwater. Stillwater. Yeah, Fever Dog is the tune. Um, yeah. What are the other fi- What are the other bands? I'm trying to think. Um, I guess you probably Citizen have- Dick in uh, Singles. Oh right, and then you also have, I guess, uh, the the not best in show, but the Mighty Wind. Like oh yeah, all those. Yeah, all but those obviously things. inside Lewin Davis is. Uh, I guess those are solo artists. Yeah, I mean obviously Spinal Tap's the correct answer to that. This guy asked, "Do you all? Do you all? The two of us listen to other movie podcasts? I don't. Uh, I listen to. I used to listen to Doug Loves Movies a lot, which I'm going to be on in uh, August. Catch me there. I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. yeah, plug plug this for God's sake. I'll plug it. I'll plug it. Um, and. Uh, that's like the only one I listen to, you know. Um, oh, no, no, no. How does this get made? I love that. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that one. Um, we got to wrap up because I got I'm hitting the road for vacation. But this is the best question we got. I alluded to it earlier. earlier. This is from Gerald Spar Jr. I'd really like to know what you think about acting versus the script in that I think a really good script can make an actor seem much better than they are. And it can overcome terrible acting, but it can mediocre acting in my opinion. Wait, sorry, I read that pro- improperly. He might have wrote it, Beth. There's no grammar in here. I think a really good script can make an actor seem much better than they are. 
it can't overcome terrible acting, but it can mediocre acting, in my opinion. I feel like he proved it. Like you were just reading out something and the bad writing made it uh, <laughs> seem like yeah. bad acting. <laughs> I, uh, I think the wording is a little fucked up, but maybe I'm I, an idiot. I think it's, I feel like it's almost always the other way around. Really good actors can make bad writing work. Like th that's what actors are so great at. They can make bad writing work. No, I mean, I think it's more the other way around. I think there's mediocre actors that are in great scripts and they come off great and then you see them in other shit and they're bad in almost everything else. I got to think of some examples because every time I'm watching a movie, I think of these examples. I got to start writing them down. I don't think that's, but to me, that's not as much the screenplay as like the casting was so good. It's like a person who maybe didn't have a lot of range, but they cast them perfectly in something. To me, that's more about casting than anything. That could like, be, that's a factor. There's a lot of great TV shows where someone's amazing and then everything else those actors are in are not as great and you're like oh they were just cast perfectly in that thing so right. i would say casting is what can make something good but i i think i honestly think the great thing about like good acting is it can make um if it can make sometimes it, actually sometimes great acting can make a bad line better than a more nuanced line would have been you know what i mean like a bad line that's kind of big a great actor could make that somehow more primal and more poetic than a, just kind of a line that's better on the page, which is incredible. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. And this is a thing that I'm like, I, I would have to spend time thinking about and rewatching movies and really thinking about it because this is things that I've made notes about this a lot in my head where there are actors. I, one more recent example, I think I brought it up was like Under Siege. I'm watching Tommy Lee Jones and he's just goofy he's just like he stinks it stinks because the it's a bad script but he's like one of the best actors ever that's also i really do think he is a bad actor at playing over the top he when he plays a villain he just tries to be he thinks he's jim Carrey. he just tries to be over the top i i, I think that's more on his acting i think a better actor could have made that work yeah maybe you're right um, jason statham's amazing like action star he can make bad writing work you know but, you know, both woody allen and kurosawa both said it's all script but they're being humble a little bit, probably. But like they were like, what? How is that they, humble? They he he writes the scripts. It's so arrogant. <laughs> well, they're talking about how what a brilliant director he is. And he's like, it all starts with oh. that he wrote. But it's like he's saying like, I thought you're saying these actors are brilliant. What do you I was like, it's all my script. <laughs> well, obviously, no, like their their direction. A film is like judged as a whole yes. by the filmmaker who's making the film. Yes. And they're, they're both, they both agree. These are obviously, without question, two of the great filmmakers. And they both are like, it's all script. You can only make a great film if the script is great. You can't overcome a bad script through shots and stylist, uh, style and, and you know technique and even great actors. You have to have a great script. Every movie that we think is great has a great script. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, it gets into a weird place because, first of all, even with Woody Allen, like, it wasn't Annie Hall, like, a huge mess? And then they, like, re-edited it and, like, it changed completely? Or was it, like, a solid script by, before they started shooting? It was a huge mess in that it was long and there was a lot of different things and they cut it down, but they still ultimately Had shot script. a script that's written there. Yeah, I mean, yes. I guess for the most part, I do think when a movie's bad, it's because I think the script from the, or the, 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 the roots of it were not great. But well, like we, we talked about like Color of Money, like I think Michael Ballhaus was the DP and Scorsese directed it. Paul Newman and Tom Cruise, two amazing stars. And the content is like pool, CD, whatever. But the script is just not great. But then it gets into this mysterious thing, which I always wonder. It's like when I read the Big Lebowski script now, right? If I read it, I'm like, this seems right. so perfect. But I also know the movie. And I wonder if I read that script without knowing the actors in it, would I think it's a great script? Would I be like, this is goofy as fuck? You know what I mean? That's yes. where it gets into an interesting issue. Is like, I can't always tell always. I mean, maybe from their perspective, they knew it was going to be a great movie, but sometimes I can't tell just based on the script. I mean, because I don't know what the, you know what I mean? I wonder that a lot. But I do think you can also have a great script that is a bad movie because you it's miscast. Miscast, exactly. Or yeah. whatever. Um, but I do, th I think about like, when I think about this, I think about Seinfeld where Michael Richards is just so brilliant as yeah. an actor. 
Yeah. Um, as, as an N-word sayer. As a, as, <laughs> he's a he's brilliant just, N-word sayer. He's so brilliant. As Seinfeld has said, like, he's like, there's no joke on the page here where, like, he is um, wallpapering his wall so it all looks like wood. And he's like, it's going to be a ski lodge. He's like, wood, Jerry. Wood. Yeah. And Jerry's like, there's literally not a joke in the script. If you read this, you wouldn't even know it's a comedy. He's like, I'm going to put... I'm going to put all this wood wallpaper up. It's going to look like a ski lodge. Wood, Jerry, wood. But you watch Michael Richards do it, and you're, like, on the floor. Well, exactly. And sometimes the funniest shit is not the shit that's in the script. The funniest shit is something that magically was made in the movie. That's why I, I, I resist that idea. I mean, Woody Allen writes... His stuff is so script-based, and there's no improvisation, and it's all... So, of course, you could say that for him, but you think Apocalypse Now was a great script? Like, it was probably looked insane on the page. You know what I mean? Like... A lot of it's a great script, but also Woody does improvise. He always says, make it your own. He's like, don't say Is anything he? you wouldn't say. Yeah. And all these behind but the how scenes. How do they say any of his lines? None of them are good. But uh, but I don't know. It's That's like my, so stupid. It's my like favorite, such a dumb take. My favorite movie, uh, his dramas. My favorite movie is Nashville, which is like, I think fairly like improvised. I don't know. It's hard to say. It depends I mean, on the guest movies are great. They're improvised and they're amazing. Yeah, I mean, like Florida Project is one of my favorite movies. And I feel like so much of that is improvised. That was just an improv show. They just kept yes ending each other and <laughs> yeah, the movie. Exactly. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. But um, I feel like Roma is one of my favorite movies. And I feel like that script is probably extremely like hard to figure out because so much of it is, is is like individuals. I think it depends on the director's vision, ultimately, ultimately. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of who's and whores and ins and outs. <laughs> yes, but that's, uh, me, you know. that's me. That's me trying to wrap up. Well, it's all <laughs> crazy kooky. Yeah, yeah, it's all crazy kooky. But uh, yeah, uh, this was good. These are good questions. Yeah, good stuff. There's a lot more too that we didn't uh, get a chance to get to because uh, we talked. Some of them are just like, would you? Like I said, would you sew your asshole to your dick for a hundred bucks or something? I mean, those are good questions. But like, uh, do uh, you only name one guy because you thought he had the best question? Um. Yeah, I guess I thought so. that guy kind of sounded retarded a little. Like he was, he was like writing from prison. Like he just learned how to. <laughs> I should have named some guys. <laughs> um. um. All right. Uh, well, I, I gotta wrap up. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, you have to. You have to wrap up. Yeah, I mean, I got. I got places to be. I gotta. I gotta go to the cellar in four hours. I gotta get ready. Um, this guy's asking me Pearl Jam movie questions. We'll get to some of these more later. But uh, let well, me. Let's do plug. A, yeah, let's plug in. A couple plugs. Fort Worth, Texas, August sixth and seventh. Hyenas. If anyone Woo-hoo. out there is around, and then September, I got Helium, uh, Philadelphia Helium. Then Mark Ridley's. Uh, believe it or not. In Royal Oak, Michigan, and um, I'm working on a big project myself. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take all these podcasts down once this big project comes out. Because haven't you talked about it already on here or no? I've alluded, but no, oh, you've it's alluded not public right. info. It's very exciting, uh, very exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, listen to these podcasts while they're still uh, on the air and uh, <laughs> or, <laughs> or whatever. I'm uh, I'm opening for uh, Whitney Cummings. In uh, Portland Helium on um, on uh, uh, July eighth through eleventh, Portland, yeah. yeah. But the, by the uh, way, this shirt became a political statement. I would just go to Portland. I like to buy, t- I collect T-shirts. Yeah, and then I would wear, and people were like, "Hey, fuck you, man!" Portland What's the statement. Oh, just because like, because it was all like uh, I don't know what the fuck was going on in Portland. Oh, it like, was like they built their own town, or yeah, whatever. yeah, it became like a, whatever, like a, a <laughs> fortress. Of, like- <laughs> and I'm like, what? I don't give a shit about Didn't those that people. Seem like such a South Park episode where they're like claiming a part of the city as their own. It just felt like a South Park episode. Um, and right next to it, Seattle, Washington. Look at that. My two t- I got a Seattle T-shirt and a Portland T-shirt. Right there. Yeah, it's, right, 114, sorry, I'm, I'm, it's, it's 114 I'm degrees there now. I know uh, we're all gonna die. It's horrible. Yeah, and I'm 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 on the road in August, a bunch. So come see me in August. Uh, I'm with Sam Real uh, off Broadway, August fifth through eighth. Can I do August plugs or no? Is that stupid? That's stupid. I just did in August. I did a oh. fucking November plug. <laughs> September. I'm at, I'm headlining Good Nights in Raleigh, Raleigh. Hey. Well, well, the upstairs room, oh. <laughs> the hallway. I'm headlining the bathroom, <laughs> Raleigh, Raleigh, and I'm headlining Helium Indy. Hey, uh, the upstairs room. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, and I got some other other shit, um, you know, but uh, I can't bring it up either. So uh, <laughs> I mean, he's been on the show. 
Well, yeah, but I, yeah, but anyway, um, it's great to, um, to, I don't know what I'm saying. It's, it's a horrible to- dismount. <laughs> Cut. No, no, we got to plug the Patreon. Fuck, just let's just plug. Oh yeah, Patreon. We have a Patreon. We've done a couple bonus things up there. It's really fun, and uh, join it. Yeah, I mean, Rana needs your support. I need your fucking money. I need your money. I have a drug habit and a debt habit, and I got to pay off student loans. Just please support. And my mom has cancer, and uh, (laughs) my my sister's autistic. I need a lot of money, and i'm homeless just 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 donate money uh and uh, no we're doing good patreon stuff it's gonna be great um, i can't believe people don't like you i, I just find you so intelligent oh, and irreverent and just hilarious i i, I find <laughs> you to be just a, a gem of a guy I'm, I'm dying over here that was so nice i forgot that you opened with i can't believe people don't like you <laughs> yeah i mean it's just most people hate you but i just think you're like a tremendous person oh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Well, you, you know i'm a big fan you know so uh oh, thanks uh, all right so thank you All right. (laughs) Goodbye, Rick. Cut. Cut.